Hello everyone. I have a science lesson for you today in the form of a story. And this is about zombie bugs. But it's a real story. So we're going to talk about this crazy parasite that basically turns crickets into zombies. So before we can start, we need to make sure we all remember what a parasite is. So Remember that animals interact in lots of ways in nature. Sometimes they interact in ways that both of them are happy about, which is called symbiotic mutualism. That's a story for another day. And sometimes they interact in ways that are good for one of the creatures and really rotten for the other creature. When that happens, that's called parasitism. And the thing that is happy about the situation is a parasite. So we're going to talk about this crazy little parasite called a hair worm. Now, a hair worm is not a worm like an earthworm, but its body is wormy shaped, so it still gets that name. And it is really tiny. It is about one millimeter wide. Remember that a millimeter is a tenth of a centimeter. So if you look at the end of a pencil that's nicely sharpened, a millimeter is about how wide your pencil lead is at the end. So these little hair worms are really, really skinny, but they can be like five centimeters long because they're all curled up. Now, when a hair worm is born, it's born in the water and it's born in this little larva form. So a little tiny blobby thing that just blobs around in the water. The hair worm really wants to get out of the water. So first it goes and finds this other larva that's also in the water. It finds this mayfly larva and it burrows into the mayfly larva. And then it just sits tight and it hangs out in there and it waits until the mayfly grows up. And when the mayfly grows up and turns into its fly form, it comes out of the water and the little hair fly is just in there hitching a ride. When it gets out, the mayfly starts going around doing its mayfly life stuff. And inside of it, the little tiny hair worm is hoping and hoping and hoping that the mayfly will get eaten by a cricket because that's how it gets the next step in its life. So if the mayfly gets eaten by a cricket, then this little hairworm larva ends up inside the cricket. And when it's inside the cricket, it starts growing and growing. It stays really skinny, but it gets longer. And it eats all the fat reserves that the cricket has to, you know, be alive. So the cricket's walking around doing its normal crickety life and inside of it, this hair worm is slowly eating it up from the inside out. Now, you might think that the hair worm would just hang out inside the cricket until it ate it all the way, but it doesn't. The hair worm doesn't want the cricket to die because in order to complete its life cycle, in order to be able to go and reproduce, the hair worm has to get back to the water. It can't just squirm its way out of the cricket and blob over to the water itself. It wouldn't survive. So what it does when it's ready to reproduce is the hairworm starts releasing chemicals that mess with the cricket's brain. And it makes the cricket's brain extra sensitive to light. It makes the cricket want light and want shiny things. So imagine you're a cricket and you're out bouncing around doing crickety stuff at night. And up above is this beautiful moon. And the moon is shining down and making all this lovely, peaceful light. And when the moon shines on water, it makes that extra bright reflection. And the poor little cricket's brain now is obsessed with light. And so it hops towards that nice reflection, plops itself into the water where it cannot swim. The hairworm squiggles its way out of the cricket's body. And then it's in the water. Then it goes and finds another hairworm. They mate, reproduce, lay some eggs, and the cycle starts all over again. If the cricket's really lucky and can get itself back out of the water before it drowns, it just carries on with life. It's not very healthy anymore because a hairworm ate up all of its fat supplies, but it can still survive. But often, the cricket can't get back out again. It's been like zombified and totally lost its brain while the hairworm was inside of it controlling it. So let's draw a little diagram to look at that idea because I think it is crazy nuts and really cool. So we start with a hairworm larva. Little larva. And it is in the water. Okay. 
when the little hairworm larva finds a mayfly larva, it gets into the mayfly larva. Then time passes. I'm going to draw a little clock for us here. And the mayfly grows up. This is not actually what a mayfly looks like. I'm just going to draw a very stereotypical little bug picture. And the mayfly goes on land. When the mayfly gets on land, sometimes, this is my cricket, guys. <laughs> Not perhaps the most expertly done cricket, but you can tell what it is. The cricket eats the mayfly. Then the larva ends up inside the cricket. And it grows into a big, long, skinny hair worm that is all coiled up inside that cricket. And time passes. When it's ready to reproduce, the hairworm takes over the cricket's brain. And it releases these chemicals that make the cricket love shiny things. And unfortunately, a shiny thing is water. The cricket hops in the water because it's lost control of its brain. And the hairworm squiggles back out, reproduces with another hairworm, and we start back to hairworm larva again. That is the story of very creepy very scary hairworm that take over crickets. Don't worry, they don't take over people, only crickets, you're safe. If you want to watch a very, very disgusting video that shows what this looks like in real life and has pictures of some hairworms, I've linked it down in the description section. If you get grossed out or freaked out by things, I strongly suggest you don't watch it because it really grossed me out. But if you're in the mood for disgusting awesomeness, go for it. Have a good day and uh, watch out for creepy zombie bugs.